Kia ora, my friends. Hi. What do you do if you, you don't like your psychotherapist or your counsellor? So this is a question I've had recently and I thought I would just give you three tips on how to handle it when that happens, okay? So, you know, the fact is for most people, getting into that consulting room in the first place is such a huge hurdle um, that you've already done so much work. I imagine for most people, you know, there's been some Googling or something's gone on and you've gone in, you've met with this person and you think, okay, they're not completely bonkers. Maybe they can help me. Maybe I can dare to open my heart and share what's hurting me and, and, and so painful for me to work through. But you, you go a few sessions and you're just thinking, God, I really don't like this person. Or, or maybe it's something just about the space that throws you off or even the location or a certain noise or a certain smell. Something's bugging you, right? I get it, okay? Um, what do you do? Well, let me give you three. There's lots of things you can do, obviously, but let me give you three tips, okay? The first thing you really need to do and you owe it to yourself, given that you've probably done a lot to just get in that room, is talk to your counsellor or therapist and tell them what is troubling you. Don't worry about it coming out wrong or even hurting their feelings, okay? So we're clinicians, we're professionals, we're, we shouldn't be so thin-skinned that we can't bear to hear criticism, okay? Um, so don't be afraid of speaking your mind and just really saying it quite plainly, Look, this is the problem how can we can we fix this can we work with this okay so that in itself is obviously hard for many of us to kind of speak our minds and if you've gone to therapy maybe that's one of the things that you're you know you struggle with actually speaking your mind and speaking up right so this is going to take some courage i know that but i i really urge you before you just don't go again or whatever or you know if you're seeing someone online for uh, some kind of counseling or something just you know kind of um, ghost them <laughs> effectively don't do that take the opportunity because you actually can learn something through this process you can learn a lot about yourself about trusting another person and obviously if they f up if they if they handle it badly this is my second point right that first step the courage it takes for you to actually go ahead and say what you need to say that is amazing once you do that you need to pay attention to what happens next because actually um that will kind of determine the chances of you resolving this issue. So for one thing, give you an example, if your counselor or therapist is defensive immediately and it's like, oh, well, I think it's just, you know, you're just, you know, being crazy or not crazy. I mean, probably they won't say that, but you know, they may, they might say something like, I think this is about, you know, your defenses. If you basically don't feel heard at all, at all, then that's a problem. That's a bit, that's one red flag, okay? Let's say if you get three red flags, that's a time to maybe walk out the door. And of course you can always walk out the door at any point. That's the thing about therapy. You know, this is, this is you basically employing someone to help you work through something. Obviously there's a lot more to the, to the therapeutic relationship than that, but essentially you can leave at any time. So always keep that in mind. You don't have to do any of this. You can just say, nah, can't be asked. But you will miss something if that is your approach and i promise you you will miss out on on a lot of gains and a lot of learning even if you do end up leaving you will actually learn something along the way that you might not learn in any other circumstance and a lot of this is obviously about conflict resolution isn't it this is the territory we're in so see what they say okay so the ideal response will be to listen that they listen to you and you feel heard and that yes, they might say, I think this is a defense. I think this is about your mother. I think this is about your father, whatever. If they go in that room, don't necessarily dismiss it, but there should be some kind of acknowledgement as well of you know what you're feeling and, and the importance of it rather than you feeling dismissed. If you feel dismissed and you feel that you haven't heard, again, please say that too, you know? I mean, this is something I really, um, I try and empower my patients to do is to kind of come back at me with something. If you, it isn't just to me kind of preaching from a pulpit or something. This is an exchange, this is a relationship. This is the place where we can learn stuff. I'm learning, my patient's learning and we can transform what's been stuck in that person's life. We can't do that if we go in with bullshit, pretend and, oh, you know, I'm too scared to say this and I'm too scared to that. That goes both ways, by the way. So that's the second thing. Their response will determine what happens next. You should feel heard, you shouldn't feel dismissed, 
but also try and hear if they feel that there's something else going on that you're, you know, that you're maybe not aware of, that maybe, maybe it is about your mother, okay? <laughs> as much as you might not wanna hear that. So those are the first two things. So the third thing is that, you know, and I'm assuming here that you already have a sense of confidence in this person, that you've done your due diligence, that this is a qualified person who's, who's able to hold your challenges and your difficulties. If there's any doubt about that, then certainly you can leave at any point, of course. And, you know, actually you might want to go and do more research. You might want to just ask your counselor or your therapist, you know, can I just ask about your qualifications? Can I just ask what your training is, what your modality is? Those are the sorts of questions that you can ask right and again you should get a kind of straightforward response really you may also get if you came to see me and you were saying this kind of stuff to me I would be really interested not only in answering your questions sometimes it might be that I actually don't answer it I actually think about it in a different way with you it would depend entirely on the circumstances and that relationship I have but the point is, I would listen really closely to what I felt was being said. And if I felt that it was about you just not feeling like you can trust me, I would say that. And then let's have a conversation about trust because that's super important, right? I can show you my qualifications, my certificate. That's not really going to cut it if there's something going on between us where you just feel like I'm not safe. So all of these things need to be taken into account. I think really the last resort is to leave because assuming you've done your homework and you're working with someone who is qualified to help you, then probably there's something happening in the room that is much more to do with your stuff and their stuff, the therapist too, you know, it's an interchange, right? It's a, it's a cauldron of stuff going on and chemistry going on. That needs to be worked through in order for you to actually get the most benefit, in order for there to be growth and transformation. It, at least in my modality, that is my approach. It's not to say, oh, well, look at this as a discrete thing. Let's turn the temperature down of the uh, air conditioning or whatever and, you know, rearrange the cushions. I would look at that, yes, and actually look at, okay, well, what else might be happening here? Can we think about that? So I would encourage you, my dear, and I know it's hard, but just to remain open to all of the possibilities. But again, the whole thing, if you've taken that leap of trust and faith and courage to say what's in your heart, then you should be kind of um, get a sense really of being of that being worthwhile that you know you don't feel dismissed or made fun of or ridiculed or anything like that okay and if you do again please speak up you have to speak up you know sometimes what patients and clients don't realize is that we're learning too it's just because we've got all these you know degrees and stuff we still we still are learning right and that's the beauty of our of our work so you know you can you can enter into this process and trying to resolve this conflict from that place and it's so difficult sometimes you know sometimes we feel quite childlike in the front of uh, authority figures, health people, health clinicians. We don't feel like we can be brave and strong and adult, but you know, it, try and recruit that bit of yourself. And um, you know, you've got the chance, you've got an opportunity and a, and a really golden one to transform something, to learn something, to kind of step more into your adult kind of uh, capable self and to deepen, best of all, deepen that relationship you have with your counselor or your therapist, and then move on to some really cool stuff, really cool work that's actually going to change your life. This is how we do it. We don't run away. Running away actually just means that you're just probably repeating a pattern that you do in your real life, right? So this is an opportunity, see it as an opportunity, but also, you know, obviously you are responsible for what you bring to that circumstance but your therapist also is responsible it's not about saying all oh, the therapists you know whatever they say is right you know because that's not necessarily true but my dears I hope those things are, have been useful to you let me know in the comments below if you if you are struggling with your therapist or your counselor or if you've had a bad experience with a counselor or therapist let me know because I'm really curious this is like me gathering more data so that I can improve you know so that I can help more people and always you know keep that in my data bank as it or data bank as they say here um, <laughs> so my dears, I look forward to hearing your thoughts and your comments about this. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please, if you're watching on, on YouTube, do me the honor and the favor, like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell so that I know that I'm producing content that's useful to you. And, you know, we've got a bit of a, a thing going on where um, I can do more of the same. Okay. Really good to see you, my dear. See you later.